Last time out for the Trans Am Series, Edmonton a couple of weeks ago. Their first time ever on a brand new airport course. The action spectacular. The excitement started to bubble over on the final lap when both leaders spun out. Greg Pickett was able to recover first and get to the line in front of Tommy Dreesey. The 58-year-old Pickett bagged his first Trans Am win since 1992. He's the first ever driver to win a race in the last four decades of Trans Am action. Now the drivers deal with their second new course of the season, the streets of San Jose. Randy Ruman back to where it all began for him. He's trying to build his points lead. Ruman is in line to perhaps celebrate his first ever Trans Am Series championship. San Jose is next on speed. And welcome to the streets of San Jose. Time for the sixth race of the 2005 championship season. It's the Cytomax Sport Drink 100 from the streets of San Jose in Northern California. Hello again, everyone. I'm Rick Benjamin, joined by Derek Daly. Chris McClure and Jan Bikas will be on pit road for us today. Beautiful weekend to go racing, but Derek, how much more challenging could a racetrack be? This is what you would call a stern test of man and machine. Not because it's a street circuit. It's very much like Monaco because it never quite widens out, never makes things easy for the drivers. So the concrete walls are going to attract these cars, and I don't think the fastest man is going to win this afternoon. The smartest driver will win here. Three races to go. The championship chase is very tight between Randy Ruhlman and between Klaus Graf, who drives for Rocket Sports. A tight place like this could really jumble things up. It really could, and Graf really has had unreliability problems in the Jaguar. Randy Ruhlman has the speed and has reliability. So from what we've seen so far, I think Ruhlman has more of a chance to extend that lead today than Graf has to catch him. Top five drivers, though, within 25 points. Now, there could be a spoiler in the field here this weekend. One of our favorite guys, Boris Settle, will make his second Trans Am start of the season. He's with Jan Bikas. And we talk about the fact that the fastest driver may not win this race, but certainly the fastest driver and qualifying was Boris said probably no surprise you come here as a spoiler not having run all the races what's your tact here what do you do with no pressure on you well I mean I got a really fast Ford Mustang and a lot of people here from ACS and Sun Microsystems and I'm not running for points so you know it's uh, old Boris winter crash I don't really care it's uh, it's a great track in San Jose never never would I ever thought in my life I'd be going 160 miles an hour down the streets of San Jose and uh, you know, it's going to be hard to pass, so starting fifth, I'm going to have to uh, rough up the suspects. So if I make it, I make it. If not, you know, I go home. He'll be roughing up those suspects, and I know a guy who hopes he doesn't get roughed up is with Chris McClure. He happens to be the points leader and trying to win a championship, Randy Ruhlman. Boris says it's win or crash, but you have a balancing act to work with. Yeah, we've got a championship we're going after here today, so uh, it's not going to be outright speed that wins this thing. It's going to be a combination of that and keeping your cool and having some patience until the end of this thing. See how it all plays out, but they've put together a great course, and we're looking forward to a good race. So he has to play it a little more cautious than Boris, but he's a racer. He's going to try and win, guys. Now, well, Randy Ruhlman will start off outside the second row. Big entry list of more than 30 cars came here to San Jose this weekend. A lot of them are GTA entries that you see here. But the starting lineup, Paul Fix has the pole. He was the fifth quick qualifier. He's in a GT1 machine. That's a Mustang. Joyce Garallo from Long Island, New York, alongside. Second row, the winner at Edmonton, Pickett, and the points leader, Randy Ruhlman. Row number three here this weekend. And some changes upcoming. Boris said, you heard from him a moment ago, quickest qualifier in that number 33, Hema Maher. That's the second Jim Durhock Chevrolet. Row four. For Mike Davis, the team owner for the ACS bunch, and Klaus Graf and Derek Graf is going to drop to the back of the field with a tire change. And that may be an advantage as this race goes on. Fresh tires are so critical here on Street Circuit. So will Tommy Dreesey, the other Rocket Sports entry, go to the back of the field. Rudy Reback, quickest qualifier in GTA. He'll start outside the fifth row. Two more GTA cars, Dave Brown on the 09. Art Munchera, and he's a doctor, a dentist in car number 90. In the seventh row here this weekend, Steve Kelso, very strong in his Chevrolet. John Condren, another Chevrolet Monte Carlo. He, too, is a GTA entry. The eighth row, James Rogers in the 69. Steve Toth in the 63. The GTA field very large here this weekend. Back to the ninth row, Tim Spurgeon in the 96 from Danville, California. Dale Hartman in the 25. He's from Santa Rosa, California. That's an Oldsmobile. The 10th row, John Klusendorf in car number 58. Roy Isley in the 46 from Grand Prairie, Alberta, Canada. That is a Monte Carlo. He's been strong at several places this season. The 11th row, Raul Pinto in the 89. Guy Dreyer in his Chevrolet. That's car number 13. And back to the 12th row here. And these again, GTA entries. 
Steve Schmaltz in the 54. Gary Bloss in the 65. He'll start in the 24th position. 13th row, Tom Sherrill in the 80. GT1 competitor Monica Colvin or Monte Carlo carries the number 08. Row number 14 here today, Tim Barber. He failed to take a time. He's been very quick this season. Brad Jones in the 57 from Redwood City, California. Gary Hagstrom in the 34. Now, Rob Rodriguez will not take the green in his GTA entry, the 01, and neither will this driver. In car number one, the series champion, Paul Gentilosi, who won at Toronto to bag his 30th career victory. Gentilosi deciding he needed to withdraw this weekend as well. And the other two Rocket Sports Jaguars, remember, they've been plagued with mechanical issues. The other two cars, the car of Dreesey and the car of Klaus Graf, electing to change tires, they'll start from the back of the Trans Am grid. They'll be back at about the fifth row. And when you mention that number of GTA and GT1 cars on a street circuit like this, traffic will be a huge issue for the front runners to deal with. That is a focus of this afternoon's event. Field starting to roll off on the front straightaway. We'll come right back on speed with the green flag from the streets of San Jose. It's the Cytomax Sport Drink 100. Keep it here. Back at San Jose, ready to take the green in the streets of San Jose on speed, and we're underway. Joey Scarallo got the drop on Paul Fix. Plenty of beating and banging as they come through the first couple of quarters. Here's the chicane that was just added earlier today. Scarallo gets through first. Here comes Greg Pickett going for second, Derek. And straight racing is normally tight, but you haven't seen anything like what's going to happen when you get down to turns five, six, and seven here. Just watch the left-hander. Left-hander right here. This is turn four. Just narrows down, then goes down to a chicane. These boys will have to be so disciplined. Remember what Boris said, said earlier, he, he likes to rough up the suspects. We're gonna keep a real close eye on them. Now Boris is making some moves already in the ACS number 33. Joyce Garallo grabbed the lead. Second spot now to Greg Pickett. He moved around Paul Fix. He gets shuffled back to third in that Mustang, the 77. Points leader Woolman is fourth. Here's Boris in fifth. Klaus Graf, who had to change tires and thus drop to the back of the Trans Am grid. He's moved up to sixth already. Hima Maher is in seventh spot. Tommy Dreesey is eighth. Jan Bikas, the start saw an awful lot of contact as they came over the strike. It did, and you're watching Klaus Graf move his way up on the back of Boris said. We talk about changing tires. He had no choice. He had flat spotted the tires in qualifying. They only had a few laps on them, so he didn't do it to get fresh tires. He really had no choice. He had big cords showing through both the two front tires. And on a street circuit in the brake zone, that's so easy to flat spot those tires. And a flat spot literally is when you lock the brakes and the smoke pours off, the road becomes like a file. It literally files its way down through the rubber into the cords, and you have a vibration so bad you simply cannot run at racing speed. So you're forced to put new tires oh, on. Fix already in the wall at turn six on the back stretch. That's Fix who started on the pole in that 77. The Stop Flex Mustang out of the Buffalo area of New York. Fix backs the car up. We will stay green for now, but I believe he's got a lot of damage on the left front corner of that race car. And he was trying to stay ahead of Randy Ruhlman, right behind the Cytomax car of Greg Pickett. So Pickett is okay. That's where Fix fell in, right ahead of Ruhlman. Look at Sed right behind him, Graf behind him. So maybe Fix can get himself going here, and if there's not too much damage, he can just rejoin the back of the field without a pit stop. Joey Scarallo in that. Red and black Corvette. Oh. Fix with huge damage. He has a left front suspension issue. Body work crushed down. May well have a radiator uh, that's badly damaged as well. He's bottling up traffic in the GTA field back there. Up front, meantime, Pickett all over Joey Scarallo in the Toyo Tires car. And Greg Pickett came here with a brand new engine. This is a fuel injected engine that has a Hasselgren electronic fuel injection push rod V8 Hasselgren. Normally, you hear that name associated with the Toyota Atlantic, a single-seater series, but they've tested this new engine for Greg Pickett, and they believe, obviously, it'll be to their advantage here. Morris. As far as Zed comes down the inside, has a look. Off the back stretch now, off of turn six, Boris Zed, Klaus Graf, putting a lot of pressure on Randy Ruhlman right now. Here's a move for fourth spot, third spot. Morris. And remember, Ruhlman said earlier, he's got to think about the championship. He cannot get into a fight here. A 
door banging fight, so he loses two positions. He is thinking championship as opposed to race win at the moment. So Randy Roman settles into fifth. The leader's already in GTA traffic. That's Monica Coleman shuffled out of the way. And Bikas. And you can see heavy, heavy damage on the Paul Fix machine here. They are still working on this, possibly with an opportunity to get back out. Obviously going to be losing a lot of time. I'll see if I can get through the window net and get a comment from Paul. Paul, what happened? Well, on the outside of the turn, there was a little kitty litter or something from a previous session and uh, just got into it. You know, the tires were warm enough, no problems. Just uh, all of a sudden, it was a surprise, actually, because we've gone through there twice before. You know, it happens, but hopefully I can get back out and uh, at least uh, take the GT1 win. That's what I'm here for. Still has an opportunity for a win in class, but a lot of work on pit road. Three categories of cars in competition here, a field in GT1 and in GTA. A lot of GTA cars, 19 of them signed in. There you see one at Pontiac Grand Prix. They're ASA stock cars, essentially, with a spec motor. They're on biased ply tires, leaders in heavy traffic, which is what we expected to see. Uh, this is a traffic jam. Look at Barasad. Barasad having a look down the inside of Greg Pickett, but Scarello in the Toyo tires car there. Corvette, Jaguar, Mustang, one, two, three. You got to thread the needle here. Be really careful. You got to trust the traffic sees you coming sometimes, and you got to take a chance, but that can lead to disastrous graph is the one that gets caught, and Ruhlman now is right behind Graf. Watching the leaders thread their way by Tom Sherrill's Chevrolet. That's the 80 car. That's one of the Monte Carlos that looks like a GTA car. It's actually the GT1 specifications, along with Monica Colvin's similar Monte Carlo. Sherrill way off the pace. Points leader Randy Ruhlman in the PLP car. Ruhlman back in fifth spot behind leader Joey Scarallo. Back on speed, Trans Am action at San Jose. One contender, looks like he's done for the day, Chris McClure. Mike Davis is slowly taking off his gloves now after unstrapping. He came quietly into the pits a moment ago. They took the rear housing off to see what was wrong. It was a rear suspension failure and it has retired him for the day. Of course, he's the teammate to Boris said, and you have to always ask yourself, is this something that might be contagious? within the team. Well, we shall see. Boris is strong. Meantime, race leader Joey Scarallo in trouble. Scarallo got forced offline at one of the corners. Believe it was down at turn three at the hairpin. And Greg Pickett, who won at Edmonton, has taken over the lead. Boris said is now second. Klaus Graf and Randy Ruhlman, the rest of the top four, will hopefully get another look at what happened to Scarallo as they went into the hairpin. Heavy, heavy action. Here it is. And this Scarello is, in the red car. This is down to turn three. It's a hairpin. So watch Greg Pickett. He's going to come down the inside to the hairpin. Scarello turns in, turns in, realizes he can't make it. He's got to turn back out. And look at this little contact right there. Now, Joey Scarello, what's the outside line here? Scarello does actually not have enough room to make the corner. And he just whacks the wall on the outside. And then Boris said, top of the picture, gets into a drag race with Greg Pickett, who just managed to hold him off. Here they come again. Down into the hairpin one more time, working nine laps today. That's Klaus Graf in the Jaguar. He's up to third. Ruhlman is fourth now. Tommy Dreesey is fifth. The white Jag, the five, the four brothers car. He's almost a short straightaway behind. Leaders again in heavy traffic. They're behind the 0-8 of Monica Colvin there. And Boris said, Derek, you and I have watched him for many, many years. One of our favorite guys. He's being a lot more patient than he was at Long Beach to start the season. And that is not a trademark of Boris said. And you, you're, oh, you see him jump over the railway tracks. This is the trolley car that runs through the city here. But here comes Boris said, in the brake zone. He's down inside him. Boris takes over the top spot from Pickett. But you mentioned patience, not his trademark. And he's, he said even in the interview, win or crash is his normal normal style, rough up the suspects if necessary. And you see him just made a spectacular move down the inside. But this is our early leader, Joey Scarello, who did so well at Edmonton, led a long time. But Rick, this does not look promising. That is the side that we believe he touched the wall with. It didn't look like a big whack. Well, Chris McClure is down there. Chris, what do you see? Well, you see very little damage to the bodywork around the front, a little nick on the left front, but they're concerned about the suspension bits that might be bent underneath. That's what they're inspecting right now, and now the wrenches do come out. They've left the fire in the kitchen. 
and the engine is still running. Now they've shut it down, so it may be more serious than even they had suspected. We'll be back to you when we find out what's up here. And there's a little nick right there. That's all it is. I mean, that's only a superficial bodywork damage, so... I oh, Roman. nice oh. leader Randy Roman puts the PLP, the Preform Life Product Chevrolet, into the tires. I think that's turn six again. That has been a bugaboo for many of these drivers all weekend long, not just in Trans Am. Riding here with Tommy Dreese, he's gotten by his teammate, Klaus Graf. And we mentioned earlier that Klaus Graf in that Rocket Sports Run Jaguar, these are both his bike Rocket Sports Run cars, that Graf has not had the reliability you need to make a run for a championship. And again, you see his teammate, Tommy Dreese, run by him and leave him behind. As you see, he's backing off now because, oh, Graf, he's in the pits. Graf with a problem, evidently. Dreese moved by to take over third. Full course caution. Puncture. Take a look and we'll see what happened to Klaus Graf a few moments ago. Boris said they're moving by. There's Pickett. Graf was third. This on the front straightaway just at the exit to pit road. He was run out of room by one of the GTA cars. Tim Spurgeon there uh, in the 96 of that Pontiac Grand Prix. Now here's what happened to Randy Ruhlman moments ago. This was turn six. Locked up the brakes, Derek Daly. Yeah, and there's the tires that were moved aside when Paul Fix hit it earlier on, and Randy just buries himself. It wasn't because the tires were a little bit too far out. Randy Ruhlman was offline. But boy, Klaus Graf to get whacked, and that's what we mentioned earlier, traffic will be a problem. When he got whacked, going by the start-finish line here, it obviously tore the right rear tire, and that's what forced him to make that pit stop. Now, Graf did not lose a lap, Jan, because he's back on the racetrack. And you can see the kind of damage that happens if you, what appears on the screen as a slight brush, you can see it made heavy oh. damage to the wheel, and there's no way that is going to stay inflated. So that is why, amazingly, he was able to get it all the way around, thankfully a short racetrack, and get a new wheel and tire. Wow, and that was at about 120 miles an hour as he just flew by in top gear right outside our announce booth here, went through the S's over the trolley tracks to make that type of contact at that speed. He's lucky that he didn't destroy that car. Randy Roman, meantime, has refired the 49, the preformed line product Chevrolet. He's gotten it out of the tires as we have another look at what happened to Klaus Graf. Now, Graf is following. Here's, here are the leaders. Pickett, Graf thinks he's clear, but obviously, when he pulls back onto line, he gets whacked, and that is above 120 miles an hour. Wow. Now, because and one of the cars, one of the GTA cars, and that may well be Spurgeon, into the tires and with the hood blown up over the roof. You can't see, you can't drive. That is Tim Spurgeon, who was involved in that incident with Klaus Graf. Derek, you could see on that shot with Graf, first of all, there couldn't be a spotter in that location, most likely, to help Spurgeon. Second, with the exit to pit road there, Graf just ran out of room. Right, yeah, that is, that is a racing accident. Too many cars going too fast on a tiny, small piece of race uh, room. That is what happens in street racing. 11 laps, 11 laps complete through the streets of San Jose. First full course launcher of the afternoon. Morris set is the leader. We'll be back. Welcome back on Speed. We're in San Jose, part of the Champ Car Grand Prix weekend. First ever trip to the streets of San Jose with Derek Daly, Ivory Benjamin, Jan Bikas, and Chris McClure on pit road. Sixth race of the season for the Trans Am Stars. Boris said only his second start of the season in front of Greg Pickett and Tommy Dreese. 16 laps about to go on the board. We're back underway. And this is one of the most difficult areas right here at the trolley track. You go over it absolutely flathead. Look at Dreese's left front corner of his bonnet just smashed in. He's obviously hit somebody pretty hard. Ruhlman gets by some of the lap traffic. So the first four, first five, Hemi Mars is in a line here. On board Tommy Dreese, the four brothers Jaguar up in the third spot out of the Rocket Sports stables. Let's reset some of the things you've seen so far. Points leader Randy Ruhlman restarting fourth. He had a problem a few moments ago, went off and turned six into the tires. We're told it wasn't a very stiff impact at all. Car not damaged. He's back for a fourth place start here as we go green again. Eva Maher in fifth, couple of GTA cars, and then it's all the way back to 12th where you'll find Klaus Graf and the other Rocket Sports Jaguar. Team owner Paul Gentilosi electing not to start today. He qualified seventh. The team a little short on resources this weekend. Paul decided that he would step out of the car this weekend now that he's won his 30th race and set that all-time career record. 
Paul Genalosi on the pit box today, helping his two teammates. Riding with Dreesey down the front straightaway here as we put lap number 17 up on the board. Hey, fans, Speed Channel putting you in the director's chair now. If you're a fan of the America the Boss series, Grand Am or IROC, get the speed on board pass. $4.99 a race, multiple race cameras and on board, live timing and scoring, exclusive live pit to car audio. SpeedTV.com, go to the website, sign up now for the on board pass. Riding with Tommy Dreesey, 17 laps complete. Everyone chasing Boris said, Derek, let's take us, take us back a couple of minutes here. Show us what happened to Klaus Graf. This is the big incident. Gla Graf has gone on the outside here. There's contact. Graf now has a broken right rear. But what we didn't know at the time is Tim Spurgeon, who now hits the wall up here. Did you see that? That is because we now know Tim Spurgeon had a broken left front rim because when he went off, if you stop the video right there, you can see the little telltale mark right there. <laughs> That's what happens when you hit a concrete wall or when you hit a car. So Tim Spurgeon, who was, I believe, leading the GT1 category last GTA. Day, GTA category, he is now out. Those are for those ASA-type stock cars with spec motors on biased fly tires. But GTA is an SCCA amateur road race category, very popular on the West Coast. And a GTA car, the 31, that Chevrolet, the Riverside Motorsports Park car of John Condren from Atwater, California. He has spun, and I believe that's at the entrance to Pitt Road, perhaps. I'll try to find out for you exactly where that is. That would be turn 10, we're told, as they come to the final straightaway. And Condren will get the 31 pointed in the right direction here, and he will return to the fray. Running order, top of your screen, 18 laps on the board. Boris said leads Greg Pickett, but let's get an update on Pickett's situation at Pit Road. Well, earlier Derek was talking about the new engine aboard Greg Pickett's machine, the fuel-injected version, and he has been just thrilled with the Paul Hasselgren fuel-injected engine from the standpoint of throttle response. And if there was ever a racetrack where he wanted to test throttle response, it would be here. They spend more time off and on the throttle here than probably any place they would go. And Derek, you know, when you're trying to squeeze the throttle down to come off these corners, you don't want to get wheel spin, and that fuel injection really helps. And the real key to that is you can actually maintain your tires uh, a lot better. So as these races go on, and we've seen it all season long, the Trans Am races in the la last 20% of the race is when you have to manage the tires. That's when a lot of mistakes are made. That may be when Greg Pickett in that silver and yellow Cytomax car puts the real move on Boris said, who surprisingly is still more disciplined than I've ever seen him before. Boris lined up fifth on the grid. He went to the lead inside of 10 laps. You're riding with Tommy Dreesey, who sits third. We'll be back with more of the Cytomax 100. Welcome back to the streets of San Jose on speed. Coming to the Trans Am Tour 2005, the Cytomax Sport Drink 100 from San Jose. Hey, Tuesday nights on speed, it's Texas Art Tales, a peek into the life and twisted times with Mike Gilder, Rick Fairless, and his custom shop, Texas Art Tales. Mostly true, totally unreal. Tuesday nights, 8.30 Eastern, exclusively here on speed. With Derek Daly, I'm Rick Benjamin. Let's get you caught up on what's been happening here. Trans Am battling through the canyons of concrete in San Jose. This is for fourth. Randy Roman, the points leader, Klaus Graf. And Graf, as you can see, tries to get down the inside. Randy Ruhlman almost spins. Here's a second look. Graf, Graf does not quite get it done. Wax the backside of Randy Ruhlman. And Randy Ruhlman got away with it. Uh, now, what's, what's, what's that, what happens here? Now, Randy uh, uh, Graf needs to be up alongside. Look, look, look. Ruhlman doesn't realize he's there. There's the whack right there. Ruhlman, look, turns the steering into the, into the spin, manages to catch it. And actually, at the end of the day, he pulled out about, ooh, five or six seconds of a lead over Kraus, uh, Klaus Graf. Now, Graf is on fresh tires, Derek. During the break, we were talking about that. He had a cut tire, had to pit, didn't lose a lap. He's got fresher tires at the moment. He's catching up to Jim Durhock's driver, Randy Roman, Chris McClure. Randy Roman, as they watch on the monitor here, Jim, what do you make of that contact down there? And is there a problem with the car? I don't know what's going on, Chris. We had a little Clarice bias foul in the beginning. The biggest problem is that we missed on gearing. We're running out of RPMs right here at the track. Um, so he's given up a lot on the straightaways with the track change this morning. And I, I mean, I don't know. I guess it's my fault, or we didn't go fast enough to really get a read on the gearing this morning. But we're we're just flat running out of gear. 
Okay, but the championship on the line, is it now a situation where you, you take this position and hang on to it for dear life? We can't, we're, we're not playing games. You know, I mean, there's, there's some game plan going on with uh, some other teams in the series. We come to the racetrack to race. We're not playing games. We're not playing politics. We came here to do the best we can. Okay, there's the Durhawk situation with Roman. Jan? Well, checking with Paul Genelosi, not driving today, but your take on that incident. Pardon? Your take on that incident between Klaus and our Corbett. Oh. Klaus was inside, he was all the way to the door. Pretty clearly, if you got a mirror, you let the guy go, especially when he's faster and catches you a second a lap. In this case, they hit. Klaus made the mistake of not standing on the gas. He would have made sure he got the pass. Now, why are you not in the car today? You started the weekend behind the wheel, but now you're sidelined. Well, really, I wasn't supposed to do the full season. As we got to this point, I was taking too many resources away from the guys in the championship hunt. There'll be lots of, other, lots of races for me in the future. They're the ones who matter today. Thank you, Paul. Thanks. And you can see on the left front of Klaus Graf's car right around here, you see the damage right in front of that left front wheel. I don't really think on a street circuit that's going to affect the handling. And you can see that he has begun to pull away from Randy Rubin now. Will he catch Tommy Dreesey? Right now, he is running lap times a full second a lap faster than Tommy Dreesey in the white and green Jaguar. However, Greg Pickett and Boris said are more than half a second faster than Graf or than Randy Ruhlman running first and second way out in the lead. Boris said leads Greg Pickett by less than a second, eight tenths last time by. As we watch Graf with the seven, Rocket Sports Jaguar, he is up to fourth. Remember, he changed tires after qualifying, had to start at the back of the Trans Am grid. He's changed them again because he had a cut tire during an incident earlier in the race. So he's on fresher rubber right now, but he's got 20 seconds of gap to try to catch his teammate, Tommy Dreesey. We've had a lot of incidents, Derek. We haven't had any red flags or even only one full course caution to this point as we have 37 laps left. Which is a surprise because this track is really so tight, which is one of the difficulties of street racing, which to my mind is what makes it such a great challenge. But with Klaus Graf, the interesting thing is, while he drove to the pits to change his tire and get fresh rubber on the right rear, Tim Spurgeon, who hit him, or the guy he made contact with, caused the yellow flag. So everybody stopped while Graf was in the pits, and he's able to rejoin and hardly lost any time from an incident that normally just puts you out of a race. Now, this race was scheduled to be as normal in Trans Am competition, 100 miles, 70 laps for 75 minutes. As we get past halfway, it appears that this will be a timed event. Let's check in on GTA. This is Rudy Revac in the 99, and he is currently leading the GTA category with these ASA-type cars with spec motors. Now, one of the GTA cars has gotten into the wall, the 69 machine, and that is the car of James Rogers from Saratoga, California. He started up in 17th spot. Here's a look at it, Terry. Oh, he got punted by Greg Pickett. Uh, Pickett didn't realize that Rogers was going to try and cross over right in front of him. Rogers didn't realize the closing rate of Greg Pickett, and they met right in the middle, and that was the result right there. So Jim Rogers from Saratoga, California, the Rogers Racing Chevrolet, a hard lick into the outside concrete. He's got a bent up front end, a lot of bodywork damage as well. Let's take another look. So watch what happens here. Here's Rogers over here on the right side. Probably should have stayed there. Greg Pickett. Now look at the damage on Greg Pickett's nose of that car as Rogers now makes hard contact against the wall here. How much damage now do we have on Greg Pickett's car, on the Cytomax car, running a very good second? He was within one and a half seconds of Boris and he's still right there now because there's a full course yellow to go gather up Rogers. Second full course caution of the day, nose damage on the Cytomax Jaguar. Rogers, unfortunately, was fourth in GTA at the time. We'll be back. On speed, lights are out on the safety car after the backstretch incident. Getting ready for a restart here with 30 laps remaining, about 20 minutes of racing, so we'll probably only see about 15 actual laps. Boris said the restart leader, Greg Pickett, Tommy Dreesey, Klaus Graf, Randy Ruhlman, back underway in San Jose. And Boris said has not hit anything yet. And there's a big unusual <laughs> statement in Trans Am because he is Mr. Excitement, but he is so disciplined today. On board here with Tommy Dreesey. What great pictures as you look at the Cytomax car of Greg Pickett. Wow, right up behind him. 
That's down into turn three, the hairpin, but Pickett able to pull away from Dreesey as they head toward four. One of the toughest places on the racetrack. A lot of cars have come to grief here in Ford, Derek. Here's behind again, Graf on Tommy Dreesey now. Graf, of course, thinking championship. I need more points. And this is the point in Trans Am races, historically all season long, where all the action suddenly begins to explode. Only three rounds of the championship left after this outing in San Jose. Here comes Graf inside Dreesey into turn 10. And he didn't pull it off the last time, but he was a clean this time. Remember Durhug said, or Gentilosi said he should have kept his foot right in it with Ruhlman. He did keep his foot in it right there and down the inside. Now he chases Greg Ripica. He has been fast all weekend, has been Klaus Graf in that Rocket Sports Jaguar car number seven. There's the gap back to the points leader, Randy Ruhlman, with a couple of victories in his bag this season. And Ruhlman won the opener at Long Beach. And Pickett could be in trouble. So look at the high-speed sections. The bonnet of the Jaguar is beginning to lift up when there's a lot of air in the high-speed sections. It gets underneath the bonnet. That could be, there it is right there. You see it, the it gap opens up. That could be a problem because that could just literally explode and break off that car. That won't stop him mechanically, but that will definitely slow him down a little bit. Onto the back stretch. Greg Pickett running in second spot. That was due to contact with Jim Rogers moments ago on the back stretch. One of the GTA cars has lost a piece of bodywork there, so there is a local yellow being displayed over heading toward turn number six. Hey, Wednesday nights, 8 oh, Dreesy's on speed. Tommy Dreesy spins. We'll get back to that in just a moment. Dreesy at the end of the back stretch where he was passed a few moments ago. Well, uh, we just mentioned this is the time of trans I'm racing where it all begins to unfold. The frustration, the mistakes, everything begins to happen. And we're got seeing it on the wall. Look at that. Scuff that uh, left front fender a good bit on the five car. And now Hima Maher has gotten by Dreesy, so put Maher up into fifth. Maher in the orange 78, one of the Jim Durhag Chevrolets. He's out of Alberta, Canada. On the front straightaway. GTA car, the 97 in the mix right there. Another look at what happened to Dreesey. Oh, he lost it. He just simply lost it. Looked all by himself. Flames. Into the back stretch. See what happened here. He locked up the rear brakes as he was down changing. You hear that chatter? That was the rear tires fighting for grip. It looked like the uh, rear wheel looked a bit loose. Well, it? it looked as though he might have white-walled a couple of tires on the wall there. We saw that big scuff on the left front corner. I think he may have gotten into the wall at some point. Right now, Randy Woolman moves to fourth. Now, Wednesday nights at 8.30 on speed. It's Pink's. Two drivers put their rides and their pride on the line. No points, no money. No, they're racing for pink slips. Lose the race, lose your ride. It's Pink's Wednesday at 8.30 Eastern and Pacific, exclusively here on speed. So we're on board with Dreesey, but he has been shuffled back to fifth now. Randy Ruben, the points leader, up to fourth. Boris Sett has a one-second lead over Greg Pickett in San Jose. We'll be back. Back in San Jose, preparing for a restart of the Cytomax Sport Drink 100 for the Trans Am Tour. Hey, Wednesday nights on speed. If you think you can't improve on perfection, you haven't seen unique whips. Little Castro takes the cars from the stars, turns them into one-of-a-kind works of art. The car's just a car until it's unique, and it's unique whips Wednesdays at 9, Eastern and Pacific, only on speed. Jan Vikas, one of the key contenders, may be back on pit road. He is. He is. In fact, he just got his fourth tire. They put four fresh tires on Klaus Graf's car because he had run over some debris and they just did not know if possibly he would have a puncture, a tire going down. And of course, we've talked so many times today, Derek, about championship points. They don't want to take the risk. And this might be a very bright move here by the Rocket Sports team because there's not that many minutes left in this race. And if he can make a real charge with these fresh tires, he could be looking really good to challenge Pickett and Sedna. Can he get back in line? I believe he can uh, fall in at the end yellow. of the Trans Am line, which would put him uh, fifth, I believe, for the restart here. And right now, they're showing him fourth on the scoring charts. He shouldn't have to restart behind the GTA cars in the running order. So he should be able to be up behind Hima Mars' machine, which would put him fifth on the restart. 
This is the third set of tires for today's event. Klaus Graffi used. Now, normally in Trans Am racing, it's 100 miles. You don't stop. You finish on the tires you started on. They changed tires before the start of the seven. He had that incident earlier with the GTA car. A second set, now a third set of tires to try to give Klaus an opportunity. Second at the championship, 16 markers behind Randy Rule. Well, if he can join, get past this traffic jam and get up behind uh, said Pickett and Ruhlman, this will be an awesome move by Klaus Graf and that Rocket Sports team. And there he is there. He is beginning to pass all of the GTA and GT1 cars. Jan? And Paul Genelosi's thinking, Derek, is that there were only four cars on the lead lap. So if he came in and got fresh tires, he was going to go back right to essentially fourth spot. So they figure that's not much of a gamble. Let's go ahead and put the fresh tires on. A, we make sure we don't have a puncture. And B, maybe we can make a run at him. Klaus Graf out of Germany driving the Jaguar Rocket Sports number seven, the Deutsche Post car as well. And here he is funneling down toward the chicane, moving in front of Hima Mar. So he will be in the right spot in Trans Am running. Uh huh. Hang on. Hima Mar is a Trans Am car. Exactly. Is he a lap down? Hima yes, Mar is he one lap down. He is. Okay. So he can continue his drive up through this traffic. That this this could that could be the strategic move of this race. What Gentle Losey just did, what this team just did. Putting fresh tires on the Jag should allow Graf to have quite an advantage handling wise uh -huh. over Ruhlman. We know he's faster than Ruhlman anyway, who will restart third. Setting the situation up, three rounds of the championship to go after today Denver, Road America, and then Montreal to close out the season in the championship at the end of August. Now, Boris said will have the restart lead in the ACS Mustang there, the 33. Greg Pickett, the Edmonton winner, the Cytomax Jaguar, he'll line up second. Points leader Randy Ruhlman, the preformed line product Chevrolet third. And Graf, who's passed Ruhlman twice already on the racetrack, yeah. he starts four. And Boris said has not hit anybody yet. <laughs> but he might be keeping it for Graf because Graf will be on a charge here. You just watch Graf on this restart as he attacks Ruhlman and Greg Pickett and makes his way towards Borisette. Here we go. Hang on to Ali. Uh, six minutes of racing to go. Should be time for five laps. We're back underway and Boris takes him over start finish. Here comes Graf now working on Ruhlman. Remember they touched going into the hairpin a few laps ago. And this is exactly the same corner. Graf trying to come down the inside. Oh, Ruhlman. Oh, he gets up underneath him and turns Ruhlman again. Oh, he butted Ruhlman going in. But do you know what happened there? Randy Ruhlman did not move over to take his rightful line. He stayed down on the inside, which I believe caught Klaus Graf by surprise. And Graf suddenly jerked to the outside, and they made contact. Look at Ruhlman. Ruhlman stays down the inside. Look at it. Graf was taken by surprise a little bit, just tags him, just touches him right there enough to spin Randy Ruhlman. But why wow. is it okay for Ruhlman to protect the inside line going into that hairpin? It is. It is okay for him. Yes, it is. But I don't think Graf expected that, and he was on a charge and tagged him, thinking Ruhlman was going to go to the outside, and, and Graf was going to come down to the inside. We're hearing that a black flag will be displayed for Klaus Graf next time by Greg Pickett running second there. Meantime, he's got a big issue with the hood on the Cytomax car. So Graf third for now, but he will see the black flag, we understand, next time by for the, un the avoidable contact, the issue with Ruhlman down into turn three. Chris McClure. Jim Durhag was a man on fire a moment ago. Uh, Apparently they're going to black flag Graf for avoidable contact. Had you heard that? Because I, I yeah, know I, you were angry. I heard it, Chris, and I saw it. I mean, Randy, he pushed Randy straight from behind. I mean, that's, you know, I thought Klaus was a real class guy, but that was a pretty chicken act. Jim Durhag, he's going to get a black flag at the other end of the pits. So there goes Graf under the Hankook Bridge. Here's Randy Ruhlman back on the racetrack, still fourth overall, but he has lost a lot of track position. The incident as the laps wind down in San Jose. Boris said continues to run clean in the lead ahead of Greg Pickett. We'll be back. Welcome back on speed. This is the battle for the victory here in San Jose. Boris said has led much of this race, taking the lead very early from his fifth starting spot. Edmonton winner Greg Pickett right in his tire tracks, Derek Daly. Yes, he is. And Boris said hasn't hit anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> Most unusual. Boris had one of the fastest men around when you put him into a car like this. Has done 
Nextel Cup racing most of the year this year in the Team Centrix car. But this is a great display here, but Greg Pickett has not finished yet. Now, remember we mentioned earlier about the new engine, the Hasselgrun built engine in Greg Pickett's car. As you roll on through here, the advantage of potentially saving the tires may be well negated now by the bonnet, which to me looks like it's getting worse. The faster he goes, the more that thing comes up like a triangle. It's a huge air brake. Now let's take a look at Klaus Graf in the seven. He's in front of Himamaru as a lap down. Here's the situation on Graf with that body damage after the contact with Ruhlman. He served a drive-through penalty, Derek Daly. He's still third. He's 25 seconds ahead of Randy Ruhlman. What? We heard he was going to be black flagged. Instead, they gave him a drive through penalty. We're being told he's already come through pit road. He's back on the racetrack in front of Maher and in front of Ruhlman. And the last time by the timing stripe a moment ago, the gap was 12 seconds. And we should get the white flag next time by. There is a minute 45 of racing remaining here. So the driver should see the white flag next time around. Here at San Jose, this one will finish under the clock. Wow, how to make it on the podium, despite being in the pit lane about 19 different times during the course of the race. But you can see the damage on the right front corner of Graf's Jaguar. But meanwhile, Greg Pickett in the Cytomax car, although he looks like a bit of a lame duck with that bonnet hanging ba barely on or off, he is beginning to challenge now, Boris said. We're going to see the white flag next time by two to go at the moment. There'll be one to go next time. Now, has Boris run the tires off that Mustang, Derek? Dick? I don't know, but Greg Pickett does this time and time again. At the end of Trans Am races, he comes on like gangbusters. He's beginning to do it again here to Boris said. 43-year-old Boris said from Carlsbad, California. A Only his second Trans Am start of the year. A 93-year-old <laughs> Greg Pickett. Just 58. Come on now. He's <laughs> won a race in a at all every single decade trying to run he's getting closer again in the break zone here coming to the final couple of corners they're heading toward turn 11 they'll see the white flag next time by picket one at edmonton two weeks ago boris hasn't won yet this year here we come last time around the mile point four circuit here in the streets of san jose california the uh -oh. white flag being shown the two leaders. Now this is good stuff here again from Greg Pickett, but there's the disadvantage. Oh, the Lap traffic. traffic. Oh, wow. wow. GTA cars. They'll have to move over for the leaders. Coming to the hairpin. Oh, Greg Pickett tries to hop it up down the inside. One of the cars, the 25, moves away. Boris said with the lead, and it's not over yet. Boris said now knows he has to take chances. He has to take chances because Greg Pickett is running him down. Boris said has led much of the way in that 33 car, and he remains the leader in front of Greg Pickett. A couple of corners to go. This is the back stretch. Greg Pickett's going to follow him through. Over the bumps. Here's the break zone. Boris protecting oh, the line. Pickett lines him up. Pickett lines him up. Can he accelerate? Last straightaway coming up. Final turn here is a 90 degree right. Lap car in the way. Steve Schmaltz. Oh, the ball's going to have to squeeze down the arm. Oh, Pickett runs ahead. Here comes Pickett. Driving to the stripe. Boris and Greg Pickett and Boris said will take the checkered flag. Wow. Boris said for Mike Davis's ACS team. By one tenth of a second over Greg Pickett. Yikes. What a finish that was. Greg Pickett, he tries to drop kick Boris said I wasn't necessarily intentional. They both came down inside traffic. And Klaus Graf, having been in the pit 19 times, finishes on the rostrum. <laughs> Klaus Graf gets third behind Pickett and Boris said Very exciting Trans Am round through the streets of San Jose. We'll talk to the winner next. Back in the streets of San Jose, the site of Axe Sport Drink 100 is complete. The Trans Am Series, our winner for the first time this year, Boris Sen. He's with Jan Vikas. And Boris has made it to victory lane. He had that quick sip of Cytomax, but you know what? You the best. <laughs> but you said you were going to do a lot of rubbing. You said you are going to take no prisoners, but I don't see a scratch on the car. Well, uh, Greg Pickett, I mean, what can you say about him? I mean, my only wish in racing is in... Uh, Two decades, I can still run like that. He's awesome. Uh, the owner of Cytomax, the uh, sponsor of this race. You know, I got a lot of people here from Sun Microsystems, ACS, Hitachi, and uh, feels good to win in front of them. And this Ford Mustang was bad fast. Joe Hupker, great motors, but uh, 
running side by side with Greg Pickett. I mean, there's no one else you could do that on this track, but uh, you know, he's a gentleman and uh, he's a fun guy to race with. Congratulations. Thanks. Morris one for two on the season. Three races to go. Randy Ruman's lead just 13 now over Klaus Graf. Greg Pickett moves to third. So this is getting to become a tight battle, but Ruman still leads but despite being mugged by Klaus Graf. He got away with it. It's still his championship to win, but he's got to keep going fast. And next up for the tour, another street course in Denver. That should be very exciting in the month of August. Then the series will move on to Road America and close the year at Montreal. Well, that wraps up our coverage of the Trans Am Series, the Cytomax Sport Drink 100, the sixth race of 2005 here in the streets of San Jose. Be sure to join us Saturday, August the 20th at 1 o'clock Eastern and Pacific. Our next Trans Am round on speed will come from Denver, Colorado, the street course there. Next up, coverage of the Star Mazda Championships from Montreal. That's next on speed. For Derek Daly, Jan Bikas, and Chris McClure, I'm Rick Benjamin congratulating our winner today, Boris Sen. So long from San Jose, California.